Thank you, thank you, Pastor. Thank you, Pastor. Those of you who have benefited from chaplaincy, those of you who love chaplaincy, those of you who are involved in chaplaincy, today let us celebrate men and women, choirs, congregations, and people groups who are involved in the chaplaincy work in this country and around the world. Give them a big amen. amen. We appreciate those working as lay persons or as chaplains in hospitals, in educational learning institutions, those in national police forces, those in the Army of Kenya Defense Forces, those in NYS in Kenya, and those in prison chaplaincy. God bless you in Jesus' name. We still want to appreciate the chap church chaplain's leadership in this country and globally. May the Lord give you grace as you minister in the secular environment. Our topic today, creating an impact in a VUCA world. Creating an impact in a VUCA world. And we are using the parable in Matthew 25, 31 to 46. Let us pray. To, uh, the, the Bible says, let me go to verse 35. For I was hungry, and you gave me something to eat. I was thirsty, and you gave me something to drink. I was a stranger, and you invited me in. I needed clothes, and you clothed me. I was sick, and you looked after me. I was in prison, and you came to visit me. Go over to verse, uh, uh, look at verse 40. The king will reply, truly I tell you, whatever you did for one of the least of these brothers and sisters of mine, you did it for me. Let me pray with you. Father, shake us from our comfort zones that we might walk when there is still time. Shake us from our comfort zones to notice the vast harvest in chaplaincy facets to the glory of your name. Be with us to the end, O oh Lord, is our prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. Come with me to this lovely story, a reminder because you already know it, I suppose, of Dr. Kelly. Once, a story says, there was a poor boy who made a living by selling various objects from door to door to, make, to, 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 to earn money to pay his fees. One day, he walked through the villages and he became hungry. He came to a door, knocked at the door, and was stunned to see a beautiful young girl open the door. With much hesitation, he asked for a drink of water. This girl did not give water, but she gave a huge glass of milk. The boy drank the milk, was satisfied, and asked a question, how much do I pay you for this glass of milk? The girl replied, I do not want any money for this. The boy thanked the girl from the bottom of his heart and went his way. Years passed by. The young girl grew in her youth. Unfortunately, she, was, she fell sick and was diagnosed with a very rare kind of nervous disorder. She was taken to one best facility in the city. She was admitted. In this city, there was a famous man, doctor, called Dr. Kelly, who was a neurospecialist who was called in to examine this girl. Doctor watched, looked through the bio of this lady. Dr. Kelly remembered the girl and the village. This is the one who had given me the glass of milk. He dedicated all his might and expertise to ensure that the girl is cured. Now she was older. With the perseverance and hard work that lasted months, he 
he was finally able to take the disease under control. With careful medication and monitoring, the girl became well. Amen? Amen. Everyone praised the doctor. But the girl, this lady, was not happy. Why? She had a huge hospital bill to pay. The girl was given the hospital bill finally, and with the trembling hands, she opened the envelope. She was stunned to see that the bill had been crossed and canceled. And there was a note underneath signed by Dr. Kelly, and the words were, Bill paid years ago with a glass of milk. The girl remembered the young boy she had helped years ago and felt happy. This story, my dear friends, teaches has many lessons, but one of them is this. Good deeds never go in vain. This story teaches us something. True religion involves acts of kindness. And we are called to have this practical religion, putting on Christ in the secular environment. In the parable that we are looking, this is in Matthew 25. There are three parables. The parable of the ten virgins, the parable of the talents, and then the parable of the sheep and the goats. You already know it. In the story, in the parable of the sheep and the goats, my dear friends, with only 16 verses, there is one point to remember. What is it? It points to us the significance of practical religion. Practical religion. And Matthew brings all the nations of the world before God. Every deed, small and great, is brought into recognition. The cup of cold water offered it to somebody. The prison you visited, my dear friend, the hungry you fed, each will bring its own reward. God is so meticulous. Not just the churches we build, not just the evangelistic campaigns we do. He is so concerned with the way we feed the hungry. And he says, for I was hungry and you fed me. I was thirsty and you gave me something to drink. I was a stranger and you invited me in. I needed clothes and you clothed me. I was sick and you looked after me. I was in prison and you came over to visit. All of you, all of us who have been involved in the visitation, whether in prison, whether in hospital, God bless you in Jesus' name. And all those working there as chaplains, God bless you in Jesus' name. Be sure that God takes notice of all the acts of mercy you've committed. And in this story, friends, I have three lessons, three lessons to share with us. Why is God saying it? Jesus identifies himself with what? With the suffering people. He says, it was I that was in prison and thirsty, that was hungry and thirsty. It was I that was naked. It was I that was sick. It was I that was in prison. What an emphasis. Three points to take home today. Point number one is this. <laughs> Be living like Christians to impact the VUCA world. Be living like. You remember living? You remember living and how it works? If there is a ministry that touches the rot of society, is Chaplain C. If there is a ministry that touches the challenges of society, it is Chaplain C. And so we are urging all Christians to learn a new technique to impact the community, to impact the world. We need to work from within. And that's the work of, of living. Chaplaincy ministry is practical religion in the marketplace. Chaplaincy ministry is the church's engagement with the secular environment. Chaplaincy ministry stands at the intersection between the church and the public square and the marketplace. Chaplaincy ministry impacts the public arena with good deeds. 
It's good and important, my friends, to utilize the power of living like Christians. That is found in Matthew. You remember the parable of the living? In Matthew 13, verse, verse 33, that parable. The living, hidden in the flower, works invisibly. You can't see them. You can't see the living, but it works from within to bring the whole mass under the living process. So, the living of truth works secretly, silently, and steadily to transform the soul. Chaplains work from within systems to bring transformation, and so we need them in every place. If we need them, my dear friend, we need them in the state house. We need chaplains in the military. We need chaplains in hospital. Trained ones, I say. What is this purpose? The purpose of chaplains, dear friends, is to restore humanity to wholeness for eternity, to restore brokenness. Look, we have the SEM philosophy which makes the basis of our ministry. And what is it? We mingle with the people. We desire their good. We show sympathy. We minister to their good needs. We show sympathy. We win their confidence. And we ask them to follow us. In chaplaincy, my dear friends, we harvest ripe fruits for the kingdom. In chaplaincy, we harvest ripe fruits after going through all those segments. No turning back once they come to Jesus. Amen. And your friends, look at this, my friend. When we restore, it's not only the spiritual component. Chaplaincy deals with seven other facets. We look at the physical issues. We look at the mental issues. We look at the emotional issues. We look at volitional issues. We look at relational issues. We look at even sexual issues. We look at the spiritual component all in totality. If you've been giving only the spiritual component, then we need to have a training to enhance our services. Our services. As I speak, there could be people physically sick in hospitals. May God give you healing. Amen. There could be people who are naked physically. There are people who are sick now. There are people who could be in prison. But let me also turn it this way. Those listening to me physically and online, there could be people who are spiritually hungry and thirsty. May the Lord satisfy your thirst. There could be people who are naked, naked of the righteousness of God. We need to be dressed by the righteousness of Jesus Christ. Amen. There could be people who are sick, emotionally sick, physically sick, socially sick or mentally sick. May the great physician give you vigor in Jesus' name. There could be people who are in prison, not physically in our prisons, but prisons, people who are in, in imprisonment, prisons of circumstances or different addictions. May the Lord release you in Jesus' name. We can only transform lives, my dear friends, by mingling and desiring their good, showing sympathy for them, ministering to their needs, and winning their confidence. This is chaplaincy per excellence. And I'm making this statement. When ministering to people in chaplaincy facets, there is no impact without contact. There is no impact without contact. And just as living, just as living, when mingled with the meal, works from within outward, so is a chaplain who, renewed by the grace of God, works to transform the lives of contacts in unique settings. Can somebody say amen? In chaplaincy, we don't need billboards to begin the ministry. We don't need posters to begin the ministry. There is no expense in the groundwork just a bell, students are seated, you do the job. Just a whistle, inmates are sitting down, we do the job. Where else can we have great impact? It's in chaplaincy. Would you want to join chaplaincy today? Would you want to? Oh, wait, wait, wait. If we do that, my dear friends, as we do this, our witness as a church 
will be bona fide. God will be glorified. The community will be edified. Our identity will be clarified. Our investments will be justified. Our wrongs will be rectified. The enemy will be terrified. And our lives will be electrified. Amen. Let's go to point number two. Not only do we work mingle with them, we want to mention a second point to us. Be relevantly trained. Relevantly trained to function in a VUCA world. Teachers cannot join in school without the training and certification. Soldiers at any level must get into our military academies. If they are soldiers from military academy, they can go to another level and to another level. How come in chaplains we just pick and put them there? There is need for training, my dear friends. Let me ask you a few questions and answer me if you can, just quietly. Answer with the word I could or I would personally, I would be personally challenged. One is I could, I can handle it, or I'll be challenged or I will refer, A, B, C. I could, I'll be challenged, I will refer. Question number one. A woman, listen, a single lady who is pregnant Pregnant by in vitro fertilization, IVF, is wondering if she'll be put on church discipline. Elders and church leaders, will you put a lady on church discipline who has, who has become pregnant because of in vitro fertilization? Will you handle that? All right. A woman whose robot husband whose AI husband, a woman whose robot husband, <laughs> a, a woman whose robot husband feels not emotionally romantic anymore and seeks decision to get a, a, a man instead. She's been having a robot for a husband. Are we able to handle that? Can you handle that? Or you refer? You, 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 you come from a Christian denomination that believes in baptism by immersion only for, only for adults. And while you are ministering in a hospital, a mother asks you to baptize her dying baby so that the baby can go to heaven. What will you do? Will you handle that? If you have an issue with any of the questions, welcome to chaplaincy. This is what makes <laughs> the world VUCA. And chaplains, my dear friends, often are invited where pastors are no longer welcome or go. Look at that. They are always invited in places. So we stop the jargons around. And so here, friends, one of the trainings we have for chaplains officially in this country, Kenya, and globally is what we call Christian, I mean, clinical pastoral education. I say that again. One major training that equips chaplains for ministry in the VUCA world is clinical pastoral education, famously known as CPE. It is an interfaith professional education for ministry and personal development that makes you fit to be in hospital, in a school, in prison, in military installations, and the corporate world. CPE, my friend, is a specialized training that prepares clergy, pastors, to minister and people who are authorized. This training is hinged on education, theology, psychology, and behavioral sciences. CPE has different professional levels, and you just go over grade one, grade two, grade three, grade four, you become board certified, grade five, grade six, all the way. This is the missing link in all our chaplaincy facets. It is time to begin training, being relevantly fitted for the VUCA world. So what, what chaplains is not? Look at the different facets of chaplains. We have them in different areas, yes. The, the famous, the, the famous uh, facets that we have. We have correctional, a prison, we have military. We look at number seven, six and seven, corporate world. Banks need chaplains. Fire departments, including NGOs. We have them. We have them all around, my dear friends. If you were to go <laughs> around, you will see how 
ministry is being done. Let's look at military a little bit. You know, the chaplain in the military is, of course, answerable to the commandant, come to schools. Their job is to help empower the young people, come to hospitals all over. Men and women of God, we need a training. And those of us in, hosp- I mean, in prison ministry, we know very well that uh, we have an open-door policy contained in the two documents, whether the, Cap- the, 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 the Prisons Act, Chapter 90 or Cap 90, and the Mandela rules, giving us opportunity to get into prisons because we have an open door and governments have done so well. We salute governments for this commendable job. It's our opportunity to partner and create changes in those facets of ministry. Praise the Lord. Hospital chaplains, Ooh. trauma called blue issues. And they are also trained to deliver death notices. When someone has died, they are trained to deliver, to break death news to the family and the relatives. That's a big cause that we need to have. It's not just crying or breaking news on, online. They need to be trained, especially those in the hospital. If we don't train them, they are going to break ethical considerations in hospital, in prison. There'll be blunders there for those in the hospital. They know how to deal with the surgical operations. They know how to go about people in the orthopedic area, dermatology, chronically ill, critically ill, the dying patients. They know how to spiritually and emotionally take care of these guys. We need to be trained. Who is a chaplain to you? Who is a chaplain? Listen, that might surprise you. A chaplain is a minister who has been granted authority by their denomination to export and perform ministerial functions in a secular environment. He is the incarnate sacred presence of the Holy God in the secular environment. He is endorsed by the church to go over He has a training. We've already mentioned one of them. He is trained sometimes to have a boss who is not of their own church or faith. They are trained to rub shoulders without compromising. They cooperate without compromising. They are the moral and ethical advisors to the secular organization. We need chaplains there for my dear friends. Wherever there is, is, wherever there are people, We need chaplains. We need chaplains. And so they have pastoral experience verified by current credentials. They have advanced professional training. They have specialized training. This training is important for us. But then, what is this VUCA we are talking about? Impacting VUCA. One, we need to mingle. Two, we need a training. But I'm interested in this word VUCA. Have you been waiting for the word VUCA? VUCA stands for this. V, volatile. U, uncertain. C, complex. And A, ambiguous. VUCA world. We can no longer use our normal methods to reach out to the sophisticated world. Why do I say so? Come with me to history. From 1930, I mean, from 31 AD to 1750, a difference of 1,719 years, knowledge increased twice. From 1750 to 1900, a difference of 150 years, knowledge increased four times. From 1900 to 1950, knowledge, a difference of 50 years, knowledge increased eight times. From 1950 to 1960, a difference of 10 years, knowledge increased 16 times. And from 1966 to 1970, only four years, knowledge increased 64 times. But now we are in 2023. We are now talking about about fourth industrial revolution. We are now mixing bio and uh, robotic issues. How else shall we do our ministry? Shall we sit in churches and wait for people to come? Shall we continue staying here? No, it is time because God's mission is my mission. God's mission is my mission. Chaplaincy, we are already there. 
mingling with the different people. Why is it VUCA? End time biblical prophecy is tinkling. There is spiritual confusion and fundamentalism. We have irresolvable conflicts around the world. We have perplexity and fear. We have lawlessness, terrorism, and genocide across the world. We have uh, issues of national security. We have increasing knowledge and new technologies. We have uh, economic disparity and meltdowns. We have unprecedented natural disasters. There is need, my dear friends, for the churches, and for, in particular this church, to be uniquely positioned so that we can minister outside the walls of the church. We need a ministry in the corporate world. We need a ministry in the marketplace. We need a ministry piped in the marketplace, piped in the VUCA world, and create an impact. And whatever we do out there, God takes notice of whatever we do. And for us to minister well, three things. We need to seek to understand the secular world. So our training is not only locally meant for the church, we advance, go higher. Understand the minds of the people in the secular world. And the greatest tool is to listen. We shape our evangelistic messages. We shape our evangelistic messages to address the needs of people in the community. We touch the rotting society. That is where we are supposed to be, my dear friends. So, having said all this, let me mention what chaplaincy, therefore, is not. Chaplaincy is not a place for anyone or anybody. Do you agree with me? It's not a place for joining pastoral ministry. It's not a ministry under even the supervision of a district pastor. You see, it's broader. It's, it's, it, it, it's not similar even to the normal ministry that we have. It's not leaving the church because some people think that when you join a chaplain, you've left the ministry. No, it's another expression of ministry. It's not even against the, church, the mission of the church. It's not a place of trial for fresh seminary graduates who work as ministerial interns being groomed and observed for ministry. It's not even a cemetery of pastors. It's not a place of punishment for pastors. We have a bigger thing, my dear friends. Church, would you want to embrace chaplaincy? Would you want to embrace chaplaincy? Would you want to be trained to reach out to the marketplace? Yes, church, it's now time. And we are positioned in this country and globally to impact the world. We have ongoing trainings. We have online and physical. And the Adventist Chaplain Institute is ready to open a center in ECD. Amen. And we can now train locally. And this church can be a center for training. Other congregations, even the city of Nairobi, wherever you are, we can begin trainings to impact society and meet them where they are. Not only the Seventh-day Adventist Church, we have other churches that are also doing trainings. And the certificate that you receive is recognized internationally. And there is a university that gives you a master's degree when you have 24 units of CPE. They give you an opportunity to study there. What an opportunity. Welcome, my dear friends, to Chaplains. Amen. Welcome and be with us. In a short while, I'll be asking someone who is interested to be trained. I'll be asking you to come forward. And let's go to our third point and last one. Number one, we said let's mingle. Number two, we've said let us do what? <laughs> let us be trained. And number three, we want to ask you to be involved. We want to ask you to be involved to be involved in creating an impact in the VUCA world. Be involved. Be involved. Touch what is happening out there. Yes. Yes, my dear friends. Yes, it's important. I read from my favorite author who said, professed Christians should cultivate more affection and kind regarding caring for others, and they will be richly repaid. You could be physically sick. Get involved. The payment is assured in Jesus' name. Amen. 
He stands there. Jesus stands there in the person of the poor, in the person of the homeless orphans and the afflicted widows who need love, sympathy, and encouragement. Will you go? Will you go? Christ, in the person of suffering people, recognizes your sympathy. Yes, my dear friends, we should seek to realize that when we neglect to supply the wants of the needy, when we fail to sympathize with those who are suffering and sorrow, we neglect Jesus Christ. And when we minister to the needy, when we comfort those who mourn, when we minister to and comfort our Lord in the person of his saints, he is very happy. And Saudi mentioned this, that chaplaincy, creating an impact in the VUCA world, is being like Jesus in the marketplace. Chaplaincy, creating an impact in a VUCA world, is being like Jesus in the marketplace. A group of salesmen went for a regional sales convention in Chicago. This story was written in one of my devotions or devotional books. They assured their wives that they would be home right on time for dinner. In their rush at the airport, ancient days, in their rush at the airport, one of the men inadvertently kicked a table which had a display of apples. Apples flew everywhere. Without stopping and looking back, the rest of the men went into the plane, boarded just in time. But one man was left behind. He told the others to go ahead without him because he will follow them later. Why? He knew he had messed up the little girl who, and had to do something. This little girl, the apple seller, was totally blind. She was softly crying, tears running her che cheeks as she groped into, you know, trying to, to find uh, the, 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 the apples. This man came over, knelt down on the floor, tried to gather the apples back onto the tray and put the things onto the table. And to make it, she, he actually pulled out 40 US dollars and gave it to the blind girl. And the man left. Of course, the flight had already gone. He just went into the lounge to, to, to wait. But as he was going, the girl made a statement. Sir, 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 I have a word to ask you. Mister, the man stood up. The question was, are you Jesus? Are you Jesus? This girl had never seen anyone do such things in such a busy place. And only such things are attributed to who? To Jesus. He thought the man was Jesus. If you were in the marketplace today, would the people ask you whether you are Jesus? Will they ask you the way you relate to the rest of the people? Will they ask you every act of justice, every act of mercy, every act of benevolence makes melody in heaven. The Father from the throne beholds those who do these acts of mercy and numbers them with his most precious jewels. Can you be one of them? Can you be one of them? Can you be one of them? I want to be. Would you want to be? Would you want to be? Would you? I want to be numbered. Every merciful act to the needy and the suffering is regarded as done to Jesus Christ. As we close, my dear friends, I want to invite your intellect and summon your senses to these closing statements. If we were to go to the moon, which is 239,000 miles at the speed of 40 miles a day, it will take you 17 years to reach the moon. If you were to take a railroad to the sun, the sun which is 93 million miles away, and you rode on a streamliner at a speed of 100 miles per hour, day in, day out, do you think how long will it take you? It will take you 90 years to reach the sun. Supposing you would go to the nearest fixed star, which is 19 trillion miles at the speed of 18,000 miles an hour, how long do you think it will take you? I did calculations for you. It will take you 122,580 years to be there. 
Yet heaven, okay, yet heaven is far beyond the starry sky, and you can only reach there in three steps. Number one, confess your sins. Number two, repent your sins. And number three, obey his word. Martin Luther said, I have held many things in my hands and lost them all, but that which I have committed to Jesus, that I still have. Commit your life into the hands of Jesus. Commit your life, your work in the hands of Jesus Christ, my dear friends. As we impact the world, we all need men and women who are held by Jesus Christ. You can't do that alone. I challenge you, my dear friends, to put your life in the hands of God so we can impact the world. I challenge you, my dear friends, to put your lives in the hands of God so we can impact the world. Chaplaincy, impacting the VUCA world. Put your life in the hands of God. Why? His hands are strong to unfold you. His hands are great and will enfold you. His hands are gentle, my dear friends, and the hands will embrace you. His hands are so protective uh, and will cover you. His hands are so reassuring and will quieten you. His hands are so powerful and they will defend you. They will defend you. His hands are so parental and they will train you up. His hands are so masterful and they will comfort com com conform you to his will. His hands, my dear friends, are so compassionate and will care for you. His hands are healing and will renew your spirit. His hands are so calming and will comfort you, mother, will comfort you, father, will comfort you, youth, will comfort you, young man. His hands are giving and they will bless you. Would you commit your life to Jesus today? that he might help us impact the VUCA world. Remember, friends, all acts of love will be recognized in heaven. Let us be lived like Christians to impact the VUCA world. Let us be relevantly trained to function out there. And let us be involved in creating an impact in a VUCA world. God bless.